So thank you, first of all, Marcus, for inviting me here, giving me this space to talk to even more people this year about the same topic I've been talking for the whole of last year. Now. In ancient history, creating software involved a lot of manual labor. You'd invoke compilers by hand, run tar on a bunch of compilation products to package it up. Uh, more sophisticated engineers would maybe uh, hand wire dependencies between files and uh, make file. And maybe some of us still do that. But that's, yeah, that's a lot of manual labor. You see all the shit going on here. So, uh, yeah. Now, le then later, IDEs would offer interface for the whole software development life cycle, uh, from editing, formatting, refactoring, uh, structuring your code in projects, modules, um, building, running, testing, debugging, packaging, deploying, all at the click of a button. Now, as Marcus already said, uh, I'm Justin. I work on such an IDE. Uh, just for, out of interest, who uses this fine product of ours? Great, thank you. I, I, I thank you for your support, hopefully also monetary. Uh, <laughs> it enables me to travel around the world and talk to you. By the way, I, I wanted to talk to you before, but stuff was breaking left and right, so I had to kind of fix that. But I'll be hang hanging out afterwards a bit. So yeah, uh, by the way, so who, who knows, like most of our code of the Scala plugin is on GitHub. It's, it's a few, now all of you know it, OK? So it, it's actually open source. You can hack it and put in your own bugs. You don't have to depend on ours. Um, so um, also you'll see up here and in the lower right is my Twitter handle. Uh, you can follow me there and tweet angry or not so angry tweets. Um, and our, our team Twitter is up there in IntelliJ Scala. Uh, all the angry tweets go there, actually. So when stuff breaks. Now, purpose of this talk, I, I wanted to talk about uh, the build server protocol, uh, an approach for integrating tools, specifically build tools, with uh, front ends, editor front ends, IDEs, and so on, and give some specifics about the implementation of this protocol in IntelliJ. But let's take a step back. So yeah, I, I was talking about the click of a button. That's great. But uh, everything in the IDE, also great. But we want to often work with like specific tools, because like once one size, one tool does not fit all developers. So we'll often use, as part of the life cycle, not some built-in IDE function, but uh, tool designed for this purpose, like, yeah, build tools, dependency managers, test frameworks, and so on. And we kind of are wire them all together. And usually that happens in the context of a build tool or maybe a CI pipeline. And these often have the advantage of being cross-platform. They have a command line interface, which is Sometimes not so nice to use because you need to remember a lot about what to do. And I don't typically remember a lot. Uh, but they're programmable. So the, the script file remembers for you, right? So, and they run, yeah, in your build tool, on your command line, in the CI pipeline, wherever you like. But not so easily in the IDE unless you, like, open up terminal window and type in there, but what's the point? So I'd like this 
these tools to work in the context of our general purpose development front end, the IDE. But that's not always so easy. So you have some interfacing issues. So you, you see these faces, they don't really quite fit together. Uh, I think the Romans might have painted over this one. Um, because all, the, all these tools like have an idiosyncratic configuration style, like sometimes it's a JSON file, sometimes it's uh, YAML, and sometimes you have to write everything on a command line. Uh, different APIs, different programming languages to interface with them, and so on. Uh, so what we've been doing traditionally is special purpose integrations. You see that here. Uh, we've done several with different tools like Scala test specs specifically for these tools. We have an integration that calls the command line runner for a test tool with the specific arguments you need for this tool. Uh, likewise for SPT, uh, that's a thing I've been working on a lot uh, when I joined JetBrains and the Scala team. So I, I tried to get the SPT support up to speed. Uh, you may have your opinions on whether that worked out. Uh, but that's been a lot of work, in fact, just because there's lots of ways in which it can break. We have like specific plugins that we inject into SPT with some hacks just to be able to extract the build structure and import it into IntelliJ. Um, another plugin just to integrate with the shell so we know when a command has been uh, completed. And all that work, and it, we don't even have nice compiler output from the SPT, in, from SPT into the IDE. And other tools might have to repeat this problem as well. Like for every IDE, you need to write some special integrations. Uh, there's also Bloop, I will talk about that later, which integrates with a variety of build tools. It also has special purpose plugins for each of these tools. So yeah, build tools, my favorite topic. So in Scala, specifically, we have the situation that we have lots of variety to choose from, which is great, uh, but it also means that yeah, we have little coherence, we have little uh, w standard way of doing things. And that's a problem for me as integrator. And yeah, as you see here, I just want to use my favorite front end. Doesn't matter what tool behind I'm compiles it, it's always a compile. My favorite front end is IntelliJ. I want to just press Command F9 and it should build. So yeah, we have this tangle this haphazard tangle of tools and hands and stuff uh, that sort of keeps parts together, not very coherent. Um, now I've been trying to work on tying these loose ends of tooling to create a more integrated developer experience. But let's go to some prior art first. So. You might have heard of the language server protocol. Who has heard of it? Yeah, that's most of you, actually. Yeah, people are learning about it increasingly. Um, so yeah, this address is the major integration bottleneck between editor and compiler, uh, made by Microsoft initially to uh, help the, their VS Code editor work with a variety of languages. And that defines a standard way to communicate between an editor and a language server. A language server here means uh, basically a front end or wrapper around a compiler or build tool. Um, so this is cool. This works on file and folder level mostly. So the language server protocol doesn't really know anything about your build. You just say, hey, I changed a file. Uh, Language server, please give me some updates if I did any boo-boo here and I uh, have to 
and, and write some red squiggles into my editor. And it has a variety of other functions, but like that's the main idea. So, and, and this has been quite successful, so much so that people keep asking us, why don't we use this for IntelliJ? It works, right? Except it won't really work for us, at least only in a limited way, because in IntelliJ we have our own, uh, not only our own project model, our own type checker, it's all based on our own AST representation of the code. And the language server doesn't really offer that. The language server just offers squiggles. And we want to do like rich highlighting, like telling, giving you a type diff or telling which part of the expression has which type and so on. Uh, so yeah, we need to find another approach. So yeah, th these are the things I've mentioned. There's no structure of the code base. Uh, another challenge is no common concept of building, testing, running. All, all you can do is telling the language server, I changed something. Um, and the syntax tree. So great. Now we have a bunch of uh, build tools. And every few months, someone is not happy with the choice of build tools, so they decide to write their own. Uh, one example is Fury, created by John Purdy initially. I think it's still in development. I, I was just trying to get it to work on my computer again, because every time I do a git pull, it breaks something. But anyway, I, I still want to support this build tool, whatever, whatever the state is, whatever they break. Uh, I, I still want to be able to import a Fury project into IntelliJ, right? Even if they change all the data structures, the underlying ones. And, but Fury, okay, it's still in development, doesn't really have a public release. Uh, so, and I don't know, approximately zero users. So I, I can't really justify investing a lot of time in supporting it and updating this support, right? Uh, now, if I'm lucky, John would say, okay, I need IntelliJ support, so I'll write some kind of IntelliJ data exporter. Keep that up to date, but uh, last I heard, he's still using Vim, <laughs> so, or maybe VS Code. Uh, but I want to import it in IntelliJ anyway. So uh, I'll just go ahead and try that, right? <coughs> go here, import project. I already have it open here, Fury. Click open. I'll choose BSP. Yes, I admit I already imported it, but just so you see what's happening. And of course it opens on the other screen. Here we go. And you see still here it's syncing. Yes. And whoop, here we go. We have it all in imported into Enchalel J. Let's have a look around. Looks good. Can resolving stuff. And a few inspections. Yeah, I can navigate around. It's cool. I can probably use completion. Yeah, it works fine. Cool. So, uh, well, thank you. So, how, how did this work? Um, yeah, simple enough. I added build service protocol support to Fury, um, just as a proof of concept. I, I hope they are still maintaining it. S still seems to work after a few months, so. Um, 
yeah, so my, my thought behind that was like, you know, may have heard of this quote by Abraham Lincoln or whoever, uh, give me six hours to fell a tree and I will f spend the first four sharpening the ax. And I thought, yeah, give me six weeks to add support for a build tool and I will spend the first year implementing a protocol. <laughs> and talking about it. So, so interesting aside, uh, Fury is actually not only a build server protocol server, so you can import an IntelliJ, it's also a client relative to Bloop. And Bloop uh, is a kind of build server build tool that isn't a full uh, build tool like SPT or Fury or or others, it's uh, just meant to optimize the compiling, especially incremental compiling part. But it can do a few other things like running tests or running the application itself. So it just models the project structure and you use that to run a build. And that has, yeah. Uh, imported, it imports this project structure from a variety of build tools. Typically, you don't define it in Bloop itself. Though there's also a build tool that just offers a way to simply define the structure in some kind of TOML file like Rust's build tool, and you generate Bloop configurations from that. But that's just an aside. So yeah, this build server protocol, what is it? It's not incidentally named almost like the language server protocol. Uh, it actually extends and complements it. So it's based on the same base protocol, JSON RPC. It's a only a bunch of JSON RPC endpoints. Um, and it reuses some of the data structures you find in LSP as well. <coughs> so you could potentially implement both in the same server, but typically you might have them separate. Uh, like one use case, the original one that motivated the creation of the protocol was actually uh, Metals, which is like the evil competitor to IntelliJ. The, um, where the idea was, okay, we need a protocol between uh, build tools and the language server so that the language server doesn't have to implement all the build logic or wrap a specific build tool. You rather want to work with any build tool you have, just like IntelliJ would like to do that. Uh, so yeah, you can implement, integrate both language servers and IDEs. Uh, the project model is abstracted into a few generic concepts. I will talk about this shortly. And as well as some common operations like build, test, run that I'll also talk about. So like LSP, this is a client server protocol, uh, but with a specialty that it's bidirectional, both the client and the server can send requests to each other or send notifications to each other, which are just like a request that don't expect a response. But typically, it will be the client that sends a request and the server that sends a re reply or a notification. Uh, another nice feature we added on top of LSP is uh, server discovery. So I'd like to integrate with as many build tools as possible, but I don't really want to write uh, tool-specific support for each of them. I don't really want to know the details about every new one. And also, like if you, if you write a new build tool, you'd like IntelliJ support right off the bat, rather than having to write a special plugin for it or write a pull request into IntelliJ, which you can and are invited to, by the way. 
So we find the server discovery protocol. Uh, it's very simple, really. You, the build tool creates a connection file and puts it into a specified location on the user's computer or most typically just under the project workspace, the .bsp tool JSON, like if in Fury you have a .bsp fury.json. And that just defines a command line, basically, how to start this tool on this computer, how to start a BSP server for this tool locally. And another nice feature is the communication with this BSP server. And this protocol is just via standard in, standard out. So you don't need to define any special IP protocol or handshakes or other fancy way sockets, I don't know, system specific ways. You just write to standard out. And that allows uh, the client IntelliJ just to look into your directory, say, okay, I can import this, cool. Let's run the tool. So the build structure I mentioned, uh, there's a bunch of requests to give information about that. The main one is workspace build targets. Uh, target is just an abstraction for a bunch of code files uh, and some metadata about them, like uh, capabilities, language-specific data, like is this a Scala or a Java target? Uh, if it's a Scala target, with what Scala library should you compile it? And uh, dependencies on other targets. And with that, you just structure some kind of graph. Usually, it should be directed and acyclic. And there's another request, build target sources. And that just gives the sources associated with a target. In BSP, uh, a set of sources can be associated with multiple targets. Or likewise, multiple targets can be associated with the same set of sources. Uh, this is different from IntelliJ. I'll get around to that. There's a bunch of actions that you can do on your code base on the, with the build server protocol. Like, obviously, compiling. That's the main thing you want to actually do with this. Uh, and in a, such a compile request, you give it a bunch of targets that you want to compile. You wait around a bit, and you get a compile result. And in between, diagnostics and progress messages may happen. And the same thing is for like test or run. So diagnostics, uh, those are notifications that are sent from the server to the client. And they give information about what's wrong with your code. So typically, error messages, warnings. But it could be conceivably anything that's interesting, like, a, like IntelliJ inspections, only that they're implemented on a server. And these are exactly analogous to LSP diagnostics. Uh, progress messages, or we call them tasks, are just updates on what's going on right now. So when you start a compile, the server might send a bunch of task start, like one for every module or every project, every target in your project. And, and while it's compiling, you could say, OK, I've compiled 20 files of 5,000. And it gives a progress notification every so often. And once it's done, a build task finish. So I want to show this off a bit. Let's open some project, some other BSP project. Let's say cats. Uh, in this case, I have already exported cats to the bloop format. Let's bring it over here. Right, I've already exported cats to bloop, which supports the build server protocol, and imported it into IntelliJ. And 
and we want to see what happens here. So I'll just change some random thing in the file and it will instantly trigger a build because I said I, I want to just build on save and you'll get an output with an error message. Okay, that's maybe not that interesting yet. But change it and quickly build and it tells you everything's all right again. Now, I don't know, who knows the cat's code base? Where can I change something to provoke as many errors as, as possible? Could, could you please remove some fixes? Sure, where? Uh, in import. Uh, where? Uh, uh, I mean, in any file. The yeah, there are the fiddles. Uh, oh, like yeah. this, you mean? Yeah, and uh, just remove any. Sure. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we get a whole bunch of more error messages. So, yeah, this is basically what you'll get when you compile with IntelliJ as well. But now it runs over the Bloop server, uh, which has, first of all, the advantage that you're, uh, you don't ha have to import into the IntelliJ model, which has some limitations as to shared source directories. And that will often produce compile errors that aren't really supposed to be errors. So if you outsource this to a tool that understands these shared directories fully, then you don't have this problem. And over the BSP, you still get the, all the error messages correctly. That was quick. Yeah, yeah so you see Bloop is pretty quick with the incremental compilation most so of the time this anyway. This, this is Scala, yeah? <laughs> well, you don't believe it was too fast? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I think it's pre recorded or something. <laughs> you want to try here? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's just uh, I'll just try yeah. another thing in kernel and see what happens. See what if we can break this if we just change the EQ class. Yeah, that was also pretty quick. I was hoping to change something that triggers a huge compile. Uh, let's see if Bloop supports rebuild by now. No, it doesn't. I'll just have to manually do a Bloop clean. Now I can do new compile and you'll see you'll, here you see these nice progress messages that you get which you wouldn't get this way over SBT shell compilation or even IntelliJ compilation and you can show the succeeded steps and now you have a nice overview how much time the compilation of each module cost you so you understand better where are the compilation bottlenecks on a full compile. Okay. So it's nice that that worked out. So this uh, built server protocol support has been an official feature more or less since 2.19.2. Uh, we're now at developing 2021, which uh, will include a few more improvements on the experience working with it. Uh, the BSP protocol version is 2.0 M4, so potentially there might be some minor changes coming up, but overall it's pretty stable for the moment. Uh, it's compatible with Bloop with Fury, uh, we added support to Mill. Um, there's some development going on for other build tools as well. Currently, it only supports uh, Scala targets, really, and Java by extension, sort of. Um, but 
we might want to expand the scope of the protocol to work with more languages and more tools outside of the Scala ecosystem. But first I wanted to give an overview of some of the challenges involved in uh, supporting the protocol in IntelliJ. And they come from, well, supporting build tools, structures in general in IntelliJ. So in SPT, for instance, you have the concept of a project. And a project can have different uh, scopes. Most commonly, compile and test. Uh, but in SPT, it could be anything, integration test and so on. But most people recommend these days to only use compile and test because the other ones just cause more trouble than they're worth. You, instead of adding another scope, you can just add another project that uh, works for this scope. It does the same thing, basically. Um, in SPT, like in BSP, you can share sources between projects easily. So when we want to export uh, SPT build, say, to Bloop, which models BSP closely, then what we do is we map these scopes, test, and compile to targets in BSP, because BSP doesn't have scopes. It just has targets, which otherwise correspond to a project or module. Uh, the shared sources mapping is pretty straightforward. But now, if we want to import this build from Bloop into IntelliJ, we have these shared sources to deal with uh, for very technical reasons and also historical ones. Um, IntelliJ doesn't support shared sources between modules. And that has been cause of a lot of pain in importing more complicated SPT builds, like uh, when you want to support multiple platforms, JVM, JS, Scala native, and multiple Scala versions like 2.12, 2.13, 2.10, and then possibly multiple SPT versions, 0.13, 1.0, 0.12, uh, then you always have some specific code for each target platform or version, and other things will be shared code. But that doesn't map straightforwardly to IntelliJ because uh, in IntelliJ we have the iron rule that one source file must be associated with exactly one module. Uh, this is because of the highlighting mostly because uh, we can't show errors and so on in all the contexts at once we might have to develop some way to switch the context in which a file is interpreted. But for the moment, we have to live with this limitation. So what we do here is we take the shared source and put it into its own module, shared module, basically. And the other modules that get mapped from the BSP targets uh, depend on this shared source synthetic module. And that sort of works out, but you'll always have some cases where it kind of breaks because which dependencies do you put in the shared module? Do you put these or those or just throw them all into one and hope it kind of works out? Uh, yeah, basically that's what I do. OK, uh, yeah, the compile and test scopes in IntelliJ. We do have scopes, but only those two, compile and test. So we can map them from BSP back to those scopes in IntelliJ modules. But maybe that's not such a good idea. I have to experiment with that. Uh, this context switching plausibly could also be done on tool side, but then the tool, each tool would have to support this kind of context switching to avoid shared source directories. Anyway, so here's an overview of the BSP ecosystem as it currently exists. So we have on the client side uh, IntelliJ and Metals mainly. 
and the major server is still uh, bloop. And then we have here this between thing, which is both a server and a client, which is Fury. So it's a client towards Bloop and a server towards IntelliJ or Metals. Uh, and any client can work with any of these servers. So uh, Bloop generates configurations from SPT, Maven, Gradle, Pants, Mill, Bazel, I think. Which, so these don't really implement BSP directly except for MIL, for which we wrote a, a plugin which supports it. Uh, here, down here you see Bazel and Pants. Uh, there's currently some efforts underway to support BSP in those tools as well. So there's potentially multiple ways to work with it. We're also looking into supporting uh, SPT, supporting BSP in SPT directly, which should in future in ease the integration somewhat and make like a richer interaction possible than over the shell. Okay, uh, so the future of BSP on the roadmap that, as I mentioned, the protocol version two is basically stable. Uh, we have IntelliJ, Bloop, Fury, Mill, all building on that protocol version. Uh, Supporting more build tools and uh, in the future, maybe next or sometime this year, I want to get the BSP support from the Scala plugin into the IntelliJ base distribution so that you can use it with a wide, wider variety of tools. And of course, that involves supporting more languages, improving the robustness, and actually test requests are already supported. So you can also run tests over BSP. You can ask the server, what tests can I run? And then you just get a list of tests. So you don't need to necessarily implement the test framework support in the IDE. And the title of this talk did contain and beyond. So uh, I need to have a slide about that. So beyond, this, this is more like speculative what can we do beyond the build server protocol? Is it an inspiration? Uh, it could be an inspiration for integrating more tools uh, like linting, which is external to the build tool and the IDE. So in IntelliJ, we have inspections, uh, there, but there's also a few plugins for every build tool that can do a variety of linting, bug checking, and so on. But Conceivably, this could be a layer on top of BSP or in between BSP and the IDE. Um, yeah, remote building is something some people are very interested in because yeah, maybe you'd like to work on your MacBook Air or on your phone or something which doesn't run IntelliJ and SPT at the same time. Um, BSP already has pretty good testing support, but plausibly you could add some more fine-grained things. And any other ideas you have, just you know, let me know. We can talk about that just to get inspired. Maybe find something more to work on if you don't already have enough. But yeah, challenges. There are challenges associated with creating such protocols. The, so first of all, you have to think, are, are these tools similar enough to warrant such an abstraction? Are there enough such tools? Or is it just easier to bu build, integrate directly with one tool? But the main challenge in a protocol is you know, adoption. You may be familiar with this XKCD, this classic one. Uh, I, I already heard someone chuckle. You're, you're familiar, yeah. Uh, where you have 14 competing protocols. Yeah, I'll make one protocol to solve them all. Um, yeah, now you have 15 competing protocols. So here I am, creating the 15th protocol. And I'm trying to gain adoption by like just talking about it. 
So that was the gist. Uh, in the slides, which are online somewhere, I can link them. Uh, you'll find links to the BSP specification and libraries, test kit implementations. And there's a blog post I wrote, which basically sums up the contents of this talk as well. Now, here's my Twitter handle again. Uh, if you don't want to talk to me directly, you can tweet at me. Uh, yeah. And with this, I sunset this talk and open the stage for questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you.